Hello, and happy Saturday, which for this week is my book reviews day. And I want to talk to you about The Tempered Steel of Antiquity Gray by Sean Speakman, a uh, semi-young adult science fiction novel that he published through Grim Oak Press back in September of 2021. Uh, I've actually had the art hardcover arc since January of 2021, but uh, yeah, never got around to reading it till, you know, a year and a half later. Uh, he also currently has a Kickstarter going on for The King Killing Queen, as well as its prequel uh, graphic novel, which is just reaching $205,000, getting stretch goals left and right. So I figured now's the time to go ahead and finally read his last novel and let you know what I thought about it. Uh, so Speakman is a very busy man. I don't know when he gets the time to write. He uh, runs Grimo Press. He runs the signed page. And uh, he's also the webmaster for Terry Brooks and Naomi Novik. He's a very busy man. Uh, so Tempered Steel Antiquity Gray is his first journey into science fiction, uh, his first novel-length journey. Uh, it's based off a short story that he wrote for, I think it was called Age of Mechs. And the short story was what I believe is just the first chapter, because the first chapter really works as just your, uh, your standard short story. Uh, has beautiful dust jacket artwork here by Todd Lockwood. Uh, has interior illustrations by Alan Morris, which I'll show you in a, a minute. Uh, the sign numbered edition, which is not the copy I have here for the video, also has full color plates uh, from Lockwood, Caitlin Zapanik, and Mark Simonetti, which are just stunning. Anyways, a uh, basic concept is your uh, dystopian future. Uh, it takes place on Earth as it is. Uh, a lot of desert here. Antiquity Grey is from, not, I don't want to say the Grey family, it's more of the Grey clan. She does have a family within the Grey clan, uh, but Grey is not their original name. They have been uh, told that they are that their new name is Grey based on uh, some disgrace that the ancestors, their ancestors have done. Uh, while wandering the deserts after a snow, uh, a snowstorm, after a sandstorm uh, with her floating soccer ball named Checker, uh, she stumbles upon a giant mech in the sands, and uh, soon discovers that this mech uh, belongs to her ancestors, it belongs to her family, and that she can control it. And so uh, she decides to rise up against the Imperium uh, that is kind of squashing down the rights of those on Earth as it is. Uh, both numbered edition and even this trade edition are nice cloth bound, nice little uh, Nate Taylor uh, stamping on the cover. Uh, you can actually still buy copies of this through the signed page, which is where I got mine. So I got mine personalized by Sean Speakman. That's pretty cool, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, you got your little cartography of Earth as it is. And, uh, yeah, you dive right in. The first chapter is absolutely incredible. Uh, you know, if you can get yourself a sample of, you can probably go on, like, Kindle, get a sample of the first chapter. If you like the first chapter, you're probably going to like the novel. Uh, it's very much, uh, you know... Taking giant mechs to take down the uh, the oppression to stop the oppression from the the Imperium. I will say that the Tempered Steel of Antiquity Gray, really cool name. Uh, slight spoiler here, but it's only twenty nine pages in. I already told you that's not a real name. She does get a real name back at the end of chapter one, Antiquity Angelus. Which man, if Angelus ain't the most like young adult last name for your protagonist. Um, but anyways, uh, Antiquity Gray does sound better than Antiquity Angelus, which is why you, you keep the name. So, so I, I do mention that it is kind of young adult uh, in its nature. I would say that it's a very good midpoint between The Hunger Games, which is very much a young adult series, uh, where you know you have your oppressed uh, District 12 that's getting pushed down by the capital and, you know, the people in the capital, and then you got to rise up against the capital. And it's a nice midpoint between that and Red Rising, which isn't really young adult, but it does have the same tropes, including, you know, the Reds getting pushed down and oppressed by the Golds, and you got to rise up. And you kind of got the same thing here with Antiquity Gray. If you've read one young adult novel, you do get the basic gist, and you'll see the basic tropes through them all. Um, however, I'm not going to say that one is derivative of the other. Uh, one of Sean Speakman's strong points is that he's very good at world building. Uh, he gives a lot of details uh, into uh, some of the religions and some of the practices of, of the world here, uh, which 
is kind of a funny thing to say because he's so focused on world building. I feel like the character development is a little lacking, which is one of my criticisms of the novel. I mean, the characters are fine. They're uh, they're not bad. They're not terrible characters. They're they're you know not fully developed. You don't get huge character arcs for most of the characters in the novel. Uh, one thing I will say is that Sean Speakman is too good of a writer for some of these characters. Uh, you can tell that he is very much a fantasy writer. He has a very fantasy voice. He even includes dragons in this world. Uh, but because of that voice, it doesn't quite lend itself well to young adult characters. I mean, it, it's it's not going to take you out of the novel, but uh, I will say it's kind of a similar complaint that I had with Daphne by Josh Mallerman, is that uh, the characters, who are supposed to be young women, young adults, uh, like Antiquity Grey and her friends, uh, they speak years above their age. Uh, her grandmother, the voice is perfect for the grandmother. For Antiquity and her friends, maybe a little too mature, but you can certainly get past that. Uh, like I said, a lot of world building in it. He does show his love of fantasy uh, in that he has to include dragons in it. Uh, one of my only other criticisms with the world building, <laughs> and this is a very minor nitpick, is that he tries to explain the dragons. Um, in Earth, as it is, there's Alan Morris. There's the dragons. They get talked about a lot, but don't really show up till near the end of the novel. Uh, in Earth, as it is, uh, it's explained that the people have selectively bred dragons back into existence uh, to help fight like climate change and fossil fuel usage. Uh, you know, so they needed to find alternative methods of transportation, and so they brought dragons back, which that is a little silly to me. Um, I, I can get behind giant mechs and floating soccer balls, and I can get behind dragons, but I can't quite get behind the idea of, you know, saying, oh, I got to go to Walmart, I'm going to go hop on Aragon and, you know, uh, just jump on and Dracarys, you know, anybody who gets in my way. That seems a little silly to me, but... I don't know. You got dragons in it, so that's not a bad thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, a lot of the tropes are going to fall within young adult tropes, but it is very much its own world. It's very much its own world building. And if you want to see some like Pacific Rim giant monster, giant robot fights, not monster fights, but giant robot fights, then you will enjoy this. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely has the giant robots, definitely has the giant mechs. And it is going to be the start of a series. Oh, you got all your backers here in the back as well, the Kickstarter backers. I'm My name's in here, too. How about that? There's my name. Hello. That's pretty fun. Is your name in here? It might be. Uh, but it does mention at the very back that uh, Antiquity Grey will, will, will return in the Forever Foundry of Antiquity Grey, book two. Uh, that being said, I don't know when book two will come into existence because Sean Speakman is a disgustingly busy person. I don't I don't know where he finds the time to even write this. Uh, he's currently doing his uh, Anwen cycle uh, with the King Killing Queen. He's working on the Everwinter Wraith, which is his follow-up to the Dark Thorn. Uh, I mean, he's got a lot of books on his plate, and that's not even counting the webmaster work and signed page and just remote press in general. Uh, so... Uh, the nice thing is you can read this novel and say, oh, that was a nice little tale. You don't necessarily need a sequel. You can kind of just imagine where it goes from there. Uh, or, like I said, if you love it and want to get the sequel, then you can certainly uh, wait on the edge of your seat for that to happen. But it's a fun read. It's a very quick read. Uh, like I said, it's kind of a young adult science fiction read where it's like it's not as young adult as... Hunger Games, but it's not as mature as Red Rising. Which, like I said, I'm not saying Red Rising is a young adult novel. It's definitely not. Uh, but it does happen to have a lot of the same tropes that young adult novels have, which are also shared by Tempered Steel of Antiquity Grey. But, like I said, a very fun read. Uh, if it is something that you're considering, you can buy signed copies over on Grimo Press. Uh, or, like I said, if you want to get more fantasy-driven with Sean Speakman, he has several fantasy novels that you can by as well, including the Dark Thorn, including the King Killing Queen, which is currently on Kickstarter right now as of me posting this review. So I'll put a link in the description below if you wanted to check out or support the King Killing Queen and help reach even more stretch goals. I'm very excited for it. Uh, but yeah, like I said, Tempered Steel of Antiquity Grey, still a very fun read, uh, as long as you're into science fiction with a hint of like young adult themes. 
Uh, but thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you around next time.